All right, so it's almost new comic book day again. Let's take a look at the books coming out so I can tell you what's on my pull list. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this is The Pull List. This is my weekly video series detailing the books that are coming out this week that are on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list, books I've been making a game day decision on. This week is a stacked new comic book week, um, as they tend to be lately. Uh, lots of books coming out. I got a couple of decisions to make in order to stay under budget, so let's go ahead and get started with the book that I am most excited about in this week. That is Static Shadows of Dakota, issue number three. Written and drawn by Nicholas Draper Ivy with some writing assistance by Vita Ayala. This has been a great series from DC Comics and Milestone Media. Uh, we're three issues in. We've got Ebon, who is trying to find his brother. We've got some sort of shadow organization that is... Uh, basically kidnapping, I was going to say metahumans, kidnapping bang babies. Um, and then we've got Static, who is a more confident Static. He's more confident in his abilities. He's more powerful than he was uh, in the season one series, but he's also got more responsibilities uh, in his community. He's taken up a mentee in like a big brothers, big sisters type program. And uh, let's just say his mentee is being targeted as well. So things are going to come to a head in this issue. What I'm probably most curious to see, though, is this cameo by the Blood Syndicate when Ebon shows up on Paris Island in issue three. I'm very curious to see how that turns out. And I'm also very curious to see like the Blood Syndicate as drawn by Nicholas Draper Ivy. I'm looking forward to a lot of action, a lot of just great dynamic art, and a solid story as well. All of those things coming out this week with the cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A and I'm probably grabbing cover B as well as the 1 in 25 variant by Jamal Campbell. Because who doesn't love Jamal Campbell covers? Let's move on, though, to the rest of the DC Comics pull list, starting with Black Adam issue number 10. Black Adam issue 10 of 12. I can't lie. One of the things that kept me really into uh, Black Adam was the art, uh, the art by Rafa Sandoval through seven issues. But with issue well, seven or eight, we got to switch up. Rafa Sandoval is now on uh, Action Comics. And this Black Adam series just loses something when that art isn't by Sandoval. And this week, we've got art by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, who's a name I'm super familiar with, although I don't think I've ever picked up any art by him. We'll see how it goes. Um, the thing is, it's a Christopher Priest story in its final act. And so there are a lot of disparate threads that are finally going to come together in these last two to three issues. So the series should be good. But like I said, the art was keeping you, even if the story was confusing you. Now the story is confusing and the art isn't as great and it's harder to stick with. But I'm already two thirds of the way in. Why not finish the run? So Black Adam issue 10 has got a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And next up on the DC poll list, another miniseries wrapping up. This is DC's War of the Undead Gods, issue eight of eight. The final arc in the DC's trilogy taken, or well, we've got basically this techno virus that we've had for the last three years of DC's that is finally made its way up to the new gods and apocalypse and all that. It's been really, really big epic, thrilling, all the things that you would expect from a Tom Taylor Elseworlds title. A good series. I'm excited to see it wrap up. I'm even more excited to see how they collect it. I know they've got a deceased box set coming. I need this oversized though. I need a deceased omnibus. Make it happen, DC. Probably 2024 before we see that. Anyway, War of the Undead Gods, issue eight, the series finale. It's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And next up on the DC poll list is The Flash, issue 797. Now, The Flash, being a double ship book, is now a book that I'm pretty much always behind on. I'm like two issues behind. I'm just about at the finale of the One Minute War, um, and I'm excited about that. It's been good so far, if not a bit clunky. It's not that it's... 
I feel like the one minute war doesn't need to be as many issues as it is. Like this book really doesn't need to double ship, but it is. And I guess they just wanted to hurry up and get to issue 800, which we're almost there. Nice big flash send off to the current creative team. And then we're going to see Cy Spurrier on Flash, which not to say Cy Spurrier is not a good writer. I just, I really like Jeremy Adams on Flash. So I'm going to savor this, savor these last three issues we have with Jeremy Adams and uh, hope for the best when the next story arc starts. But for now, four issues left. Flash 797 has got a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And next up is another book that I'm like sneakily behind on. Like, I don't know how I suddenly got to be two issues behind on this book. Well, this is Nightwing, issue 103. Basically, I read the big uh, celebration in Nightwing 100 when the Titans came to Bloodhaven and somehow stopped reading after that. Uh, so I got some decisions to make on this pull list because I got to get these numbers down. And it kind of doesn't make sense to buy this many DC books when I already have the the DC Ultra membership and I can just read everything 30 days later and I tend to read things 30 days later anyway because it's more convenient. But anyway, for now, Nightwing still has a spot on the pull list with a cover price of $4.99, grabbing cover A. Next up and the last book on the DC pull list is the one I'm most excited about. This is Superman, issue number three. Superman uh, by Joshua Williams with art, Joshua Williams' son with art by Jamal Campbell, has been great. Through two issues, we basically just got like calamity ensuing. Uh, Superman really doesn't want to team up with Lex, but doesn't really have much of a choice. And I think we're finally going to get that team up in this week's issue. I'm excited to see it. Superman issue number three. It's got a cover price of also $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's it for the DC books on the pull list. If I just stick to the list, those books are going to cost me $27 this week. Now, let's move on to Marvel Comics, the House of Ideas, uh, where the first big idea is Amazing Spider-Man, issue number 24. I think starting with issue 22, Spider-Man has started to pick up. We're getting more and more information as to how the status quo got to be where it's been for the last 24 issues, basically. And honestly, it's good. But I said, I think a couple of weeks ago, uh, it feels kind of like too little, too late. Like, why didn't we just get this from the beginning? But all that said, you know, hey, in the story arc with a bang, I guess. So this issue, we're going to figure out just how Norman Osborn got on Spider-Man's side and, you know, what that means for everyone else in the Spider-Man community, so to speak. So, uh I think this will be an interesting enough issue. Art by John Romita Jr., written by Zeb Wells. This one's got a cover price of $3.99, grabbing cover A. And then, then, the next book on the pull list is one that I really wanted to put on the chopping block, but I think it's safe. This is Nightcrawlers, issue number three. So, Nightcrawlers, a part of the, basically the last book in the third act of The Sins of Sinister Event. So, Last week, we got uh, Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants. The week before that, we got Immoral X-Men, issue number three. And things are coming to a head. We found out like where Moira's been hiding. We have found out all this power that Storm's gotten, even in, well, I don't wanna spoil anything. So we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten some significant development. I just don't really care as much as maybe I should. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's more important than it feels week to week, but it just feels like this series has devolved. And it doesn't help that the art changed. Like, no disrespect to the artist, I think his last name is Viti, Viti, uh, who's on this last Immoral X-Men and, and Storm of the Brotherhood. And he's going to be on this one as well, uh, Nightcrawler's number three. It just feels like a not as great version of Daniel Warren Johnson art. It feels rushed. It feels sketchy in ways that it shouldn't for an event that seems to be planned this well in advance and so on. I don't know, man. Kieran Gillen is 0 for 2 for me with these X-Men events, but this is basically the second to last issue of the event. Then we got Sense of Sinister Dominion and for whatever reason, I'm buying them both. But for now, Nightcrawler's number three. It's got a cover price of $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. 
And now let's move on to the most most exciting piece of the X-Men universe right now. X-Force, issue number 39. So listen, Beast has broken bad uh, with the X-Force. It's just been crazy. Like between the X-Force proper and the Wolverine title, I've really, really been enjoying it. This issue, we're going to see the return to the team of Colossus. And we're also getting a new addition in Laura, X-23, Wolverine. Uh, so that's going to be cool. It's going to be a fun book written by Ben Percy. I don't know who's doing art because Joshua Kassar is not anymore. But all in all, should be a great issue. X-Force issue 39. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And I like the cover A, but I like the cover B more. So I think I'm grabbing this cover B. And uh, that's going to do it for the Marvel books on the pull list. So those are going to cost me $12 this week. And now let's move on to the indies where uh, when there's trouble, you call DW. Darkwing Duck, issue number four, is out this week. Darkwing Duck, uh, written by Amanda Dibert with art by Carlo Lauro. This book has been great. Every issue is a 10 out of 10. It's, I mean, it's me right in the nostalgic feels. All the voices ring true to the characters. The art is like swiped straight out of the animated series. It's fun. It's really all I can say. It's just fun. Uh, but what's been going on? Uh, Darkwing. Darkwing has decided he does not want to be Darkwing anymore. He's tired of putting Goslin in danger. He's going to live the rest of his life as a civilian, even if it just really, really bothers him. Now, we've seen this kind of before just that urge to be a hero. I'm excited to see how it plays out, especially since Bushroot's back in town. Can Drake Mallard really beat Bushroot without being the terror that flaps in the night? Sure he can. Sure he can. Because Bushroot's a known skull. But anyway, Civilian Drake versus Bushroot. It's all happening in this week's issue of Darkwing Duck. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And I like the cover A. I like Mirka and Dolfo's cover B. But I think the one I'm actually going to go with is the cover D. And it's got Drake Mallard and it's got like Darkwing in a tree. I feel like that just is the most representative of what's going on in this issue. So there we go. $3.99. I'm getting cover D. Next up from Image Comics is Gunslinger Spawn issue 19. Um, I'm one issue behind on this series. I read 17, but not 18. But it doesn't really matter. I'm only buying this. Well, I'm mostly buying this for the cover. The cover A by Mark Brooks that connects to every other Spawn's Universe title this month. It's got a cover price of $2.99, and that's the one I'm grabbing. Next up is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue number 107. I've really been enjoying this series. Even though all the characters aren't exactly the same as the ones from my childhood, the ones that are have very similar voices. Uh, the stakes are high. The situation is dire. And there's a lot of good character development. I've really been enjoying Mighty Morphin Power Rangers through six issues. Issue 107 out this week with a cover price of $3.99. And the one I'm grabbing is the cover A by Torrin Clark. Now, we've made it to the first book on the chopping block this week. Uh, so no one, no one issue number two comes out this week. Written by Kyle Higgins and... Can't lie, I never even read issue one. I just got behind and never got to it. I thought this was going to be a four-issue miniseries. It's actually a 10-issue maxi-series. And chances are I'm just never going to read it on time. So I'd rather drop the book from the pull list and I'll probably grab it later on. Because right now you can get the single issue on Comixology for like $1.79 for issue one. So just wait a few weeks, get it a little bit cheaper if you don't need it in print, but you still want to enjoy the story. I wonder how that money breaks down to the creators. I feel like it can't change that much. I don't know. It's a good question for an indie creator. But No One Number Two is the first book on the chopping block. And by not buying it, I'm saving $3.99 off my grand total for this week. Now let's move on to another book that I probably should drop, but I'm not. This is The Walking Dead Deluxe, issue number 61. I've been collecting The Walking Dead Deluxe, um, I don't know for the past 61 months. Well, no, not 60 months. It's been, they, they double ship it. But twice a month, I grabbed the Walking Dead Deluxe for an eventual custom bind project that I thought would just be cool to have, the Walking Dead in color. But man, when I gotta like really cut, make some cuts, Walking Dead Deluxe seems like the first thing that should go. 
but it hasn't yet. Cover price on it is three ninety nine. I'm getting cover A by David Finch, and that that is the last book on my pull list. And so, and so, the indies on my list are going to cost me fifteen dollars since I saved four on no one, and my grand total for the week is fifty four dollars. Now that's before taxes and before my subscriber discount. So. I'll probably be somewhere around 51 after bags and boards and all that. And that really means I probably should drop one more book. And the only one that I'm like, ooh, I could probably drop this and not be mad at myself. Uh, there's a couple. Black Adam number 10. Uh, I could probably wait for a trade on that. Uh, and then Nightcrawlers. Nightcrawlers is probably the other one. Because... Chances are I'm going to end up buying that hardcover anyway. Do I need it in both formats? No. But at this point, I probably make more just buying all the single issues for Sins of Sinister and then selling those in a lot. Maybe that's how I'll pay for the hardcover. Decisions. But anyway, grand total of 54. What's on your pull list this week? What are you excited about? How are you making cuts in, you know, a recession? And, uh, you know, there's so much content coming out of how are you deciding what you're buying and what you're leaving on the shelf? Let me know. Speaking of things being on shelves, thanks to all the channel family that make it possible for me to grab books off the shelf each week. You guys are the real MVPs. You make my pull list as well as all the content on this channel possible. If you're interested in helping the channel out in the same way, click the join button down below and learn more about it. And that's going to do it for me and my pull list this week. I'll see you guys in another video soon. Until then, stay awesome and uh, read something dope today.